everyone and welcome to our brand new show called Real Lifestyles of the New Golden Age. Yes. This is episode one. I'm Giselle Coy. I'm Ryan DeRowan. And thank you for joining us. So for those of you who don't know us, um, I am an author, a blogger, someone committed to the ascension of our planet, someone who works as a galactic ambassador, someone who helps people be creative. I believe in the creativity formula for everything. So like many of you, I just do a lot of creations, all geared towards where we're headed, which is the ascension. Rion is also a creator yes. in different realms. He works as an earth guardian and he has a show coming out soon about that, mm -hmm. which will educate many people that, about this whole subject. He also does, um, he's a YouTube creator. I'm more of an author. He's a YouTube creator. He's Really good on camera. He Conscious makes, media. Yes. He has a fantastic YouTube channel, and we'll do that during our, our advertising portion yes, of the evening. Yes, advertising portion. So, but today, our whole subject is real lifestyles of the new golden age. Mm. Okay, what does that even mean? Right. What is a spiritual life today? Mm. What is, what people have all these words that are always flying around. We're in the fifth dimension. We're in the new golden age. Mm. We have arrived. We are now living in our embodiment. We are now in our ascended mastery. Yes. So all these things that are floating around, which are kind of amazing because we're at a really important time. And one of the reasons for the show in this time is that we are at the beginning of a very special five month window ending September 28th, 2015. And that's when all of this is really brewing. Have the next blood moon? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. And that's when what's happening is, is this is our chance. So if ever you wanted to like, hey, I'm all in. Right. I want to ascend. I want to do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. This is the time. Go into your man cave, woman cave. A hundred percent. You know, taking that time to truly know thyself. Taking that time to actually listen to your intuition. Taking that time to actually do what you feel in your heart is in your best interest is paramount right now. If you want to think about it, if they took a, if you had a clipboard, say an angel, your own personal angel, right, or your higher self came down, had a clipboard, had your name on it, and said, here's all the things that my lower self, to say Giselle. 3D would, version. 3D version, yeah. or Rion 3D version, would like to create today. Or some of the things that uh, Ryan and Giselle are working on today, this week, this month, this year, this incarnation. The issue is that the amount of time you spend with your thoughts and your own willpower and what you wish to create is very important and it's paramount right now to make a decision on what type of life you'd like to live. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I love the whole subject about what you want to create because we're all wondering, okay, what do I create now? It's kind of mm -hmm. like somebody changed the, the rules of the game and what I thought I wanted to create, I didn't, I don't really know. We're kind of like... Right. Part of it is our highest destiny coming in, and part of it is everything is changing and we are changing. So like today, mm. for the last few days we've been going, okay, let's do a blog talk. Rihanna and I do a lot of blog talks together, and it's like, wait, no, I think we should do a podcast. Because mm. podcast, um, a good friend of mine said, is the new rock and roll, which I believe because instead of music, we're listening to positive stuff. We've got Abraham in our ears, we've yes. got Matt Kahn, Sandra Walter, it's mm. like, we want, those are our new rock stars. Right. Keep us in a high vibe. Get there right. and keep us there. So anyway, we all are going, well, do we want to, which one do we want to do? And we talked about it. Yeah, we We're did. We're like, no, yeah. camera. No, I don't want a camera. No, I don't want a camera. No. It's too early in the yeah, morning. No, uh, no. Anyway, we decided, let's do them all. So right. this creation right now, which mm -hmm. we're actually very excited about and we want to expand, mm -hmm. um, is also going to be a podcast and a blog talk. And so a lot of us are now just moving into these things as we decide what to create. Right. Just create everything. We don't. Mm -hmm. ha it doesn't have to be one thing. I think the old school thinking was, I'm just going to nail it on the YouTube. No. People learn through ears, eyes, different senses. Right. So whatever your creations are, make sure they're available in written form, audio form, verbal form, visual form. Whatever is your easiest way that you uh, enjoy to learn, though, the easiest uptake of the information for you. Uh, there are some people that are very visual. There are some people that you know learn very well with auditorily. And there are some people that are very hands-on. Whatever that is for you and your creations and your truly the, the manner in which you process, that is the key, that is your strength, and that was what you should focus on. So in doing all three, I feel that um, we will hopefully be a part of one of those skill sets you're working on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so 
a lifestyle of the new golden age. When I hear that, I think of like, I see these Egyptians walking around in these gold robes. Right. Or I see the Olympians on Mount Olympus. Yes. Eating the ambrosia. Yes. And I'm like, wait, how, is our lifestyle like that yet? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how do we take that visual Lemuria, image and mix power. it? Yeah, and mix, mix it with right now. Uh, it's, a lot of it I think has to do with, um, your sacred space, creating your sacred space, but also getting out into nature is key and paramount. Uh, understanding how beautiful our garden is that we play in, Earth, and um, taking lots of resonance. I mean, you know, when they, for example, uh, being very zen with your room, feng shui, sit, being conscious of where you sleep, conscious of where your couch is placed, conscious of where your belongings are, not to live in clutter. Uh, understand in this material world, uh, the more attachments you have, the more difficult it is to see your own reflection. Let's start with this. Okay, so while I'm conjuring all these golden age lifestyles, which I want, I want everything golden around me. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, well, we, in fact, we've been spray yeah. painting everything <laughs> we gold. own with gold. <laughs> painting yes. baseboards in gold. We're, I don't know if any of y'all have been doing that, but maybe we're just trying to make, make the show. Maybe it's I, I'm trying to just copy how I live upstairs, <laughs> like down here. I'm like, if I had more gold, it just go, aids. Yes, gold, it helps. Gold works. Gold spray paint is yes. wonderful. Yes. But why don't we talk about this? I think this is um, one thing that I like to know about other people that have a high frequency and maintain a high frequency. Okay, let's just kind of like become voyeurs and go into their life. Let's see, what is their lifestyle like? In particular, what is their daily protocol? What's their routine? So I think we should share ours. You want to share ours? Sure, ladies first. Oh, thank you. But of course. Okay, so daily lifestyle. Um, I'm actually pretty disciplined. I'm kind of old school in that I believe in being really disciplined. There's certain non-negotiables that I have to do every day. And number one, when I wake up, I have to instantly sit in meditation. And I do that for like 15, 20 minutes and I connect with all my guides. I bring in higher energy. I surround myself in white light. And I connect to information. I could go, we could do a whole show on exactly yes. the breakdown of how that goes. but I find that still time to connect and remember that I'm I'm here to live in a higher vibration and I'm here to have my day. I'm setting my day to be the highest it can be. Yes. I want my creations the highest. I want everything to be the highest. So I'm setting that energy. Then I actually go from there. I go outside and do a bigger meditation. Rion, which mm. we haven't even mentioned yet, has built a 20 foot um, or, golden pyramid. Oregon powered pyramid, yes. It's insane. <laughs> okay, I don't want to make anybody feel bad because you cannot sit in it. We're going to do a show. Yes. The sun's too bright right now, but yeah. we are going to do a show from there. Yes, definitely. And if you have access to a pyramid, um, it's really amazing. I consider it a gift that when I'm in Sedona, I get to sit in this pyramid and actually meditate, look up in the sky, and actually just feel like this warmth of energy. It's like it's kind of like a... Uh, a booster. Yes, it, I would it's, say it's a booster. It's a, definitely a booster. A booster for connecting. Yeah. Yes. And so, anyway, I'm going to get Ryan to talk about that pyramid mm -hmm. when we get to that. Yes. But I sit there, and that's where I do my writing, and maybe I have a cup of coffee because that actually raises my frequency. We're not against any of that, anything like that. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and then from there, like I said, I'm planning my day, and I then I try and be as quiet as possible. If if I had my ideal day. Till noon, I would not speak to another person. I'm an introvert. I get power from being quiet mm. and not talking and just letting everything, I call it stewing in my isness, so I can hear my thoughts. I can see what wants to create instead yeah. of engaging in the world. Engaging in the world is a whole other vibration. Well, you know, depending on what type of engagement you're having, you know, mind you, if you're around a lot, on many uh, like minded people, as we are in Sedona. True. Um, the people that come visit me in my house, we're all in like the same team. So it's almost like, you know, either replaying what happened in Dreamtime last night, uh, working on different projects, which we have uh, many on the table right now, not only TV shows, but our own Roku channel as well, sit on a free TV. That's coming down the pipeline. The main thing is that in our expression and our creativity, as we begin, become more structured. Well, as you become more structured in your foundation layer, you know, everything begins to be um, available to you. Now you can do one, two, maybe three, maybe four things simultaneously while you're working throughout your day. I notice with myself, I'm a very creative person, but I don't like to be forced to do one thing every day. It's kind of like being forced to do a nine to five job. 
right? Everyone has to work in their own in their own manner, in their own way. However, what I like to do is say I'll work on some light tools for about, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, and then I'll channel some things, and then I'll write some things down, or then I might make a blog talk or a Hey, what's your morning? Video. What's your wake-up routine? My morning, um, since I sleep in a pyramid, another uh, uh, eight-sided, or seven-sided pyramid, I have the front open for so I can We're check pyramid out crazy night. and, and yeah, gold spray paint crazy. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, I am actually conscious, uh, probably the last 45 minutes, I'd say before I wake up in the morning, I'm completely conscious in my dreams. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly where I'm going. I know what dimension I'm in based on my surroundings. I know what 4D looks like. I know what 5D looks like. I know what 6D looks like and so forth. If I'm on a spaceship and I wake up in the morning, I'm definitely in 6D or above. All right. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I should wake up from that. And uh, funny enough, I've been noticing that when I get up in the morning, uh, for example, this morning, the, uh, the uh, handyman <laughs> was here. And I told him the night before, I'm like, hey, Todd, <laughs> I'm going to leave the side door open for you. Just come on in and do your work. Well, of course, he's got to come in and be like, hey, man, what's going on? I wake up like some sort of green bean. I'm not in my body, right? My hands and my arms are numb. I'm like, hey. Hey, Todd, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm like, not in my body whatsoever. So it takes me about 15, 20 minutes to get back in my body. Mind you, I sleep in a pyramid, and then I have my morning coffee and my morning tea, and then I go ahead and go into the new pyramid, which I created outside. Um, I find that if I stay in the bandwidth, the key is keeping your vibration in that bandwidth. Imagine having all that conscious and all those energetic uh, availabilities to you as you're, when you're dreaming. But imagine waking with that ability set while you're consciously awake. Being able to ask any of those questions, see any of those things while you're still awake. So what I recommend to all humans, all my family, all my friends out there, right? all my ETs out there, right? lovely, angelic beings, take your time waking up in the morning. There is no rush. I think that's one of the main things about the control on this planet. Uh, they know that young children, when they're in high schools and different grade schools and they're finding this in other countries, they don't work on the wake up at 7 and go to school till 3 p.m. The kids are screaming, crying, they don't want to get up. The issue is that it's not they don't want to put that work in, it's just the hours allotted that they were supposed to work in is, it does not work for them. And just understand the difference between being forced to do something, hence slavery, and then your own choice in your own yeah. particular. Understand the difference between that because go with your own rhythm. Go know thyself. Your own flow. Know thyself. No, so, you cannot know thyself. You gotta enough. see the game. I mean, I'm just trying to be real honest with you. When you start seeing the game from the control standpoint to us being in 3D and being awake, um, being conscious, you know, you know, that was a great conversation we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to everyone about when you wake up, like. We have this conversation a lot. It's like, how much debris do you wake up in? Like, am I waking up with that anxiety in my head running? It's like, I wake up with this mild film of I'm anxious, I'm worried, I've got these thoughts looping. Mm. And then sometimes I wake up and I'm really crystal clear. I'm like, what is the difference? Well, right. a lot of that is planetary and it's not your own stuff. Mm. We don't know that. We think it's our stuff, but it's not. And I was talking to you and you mm. said that, you had a great comment. You said... That's why we keep our frequency up because if you're at the top of the pyramid right. here, the other voices that Have are on to the come lower up and meet you yeah. up here. They're not knocking on your front door like, "Ha, here's 3D and every single problem that I'm having." No. You have to come upstairs and then meet me eye to eye. Now, if we choose or I choose or you choose, all my gifted beings out there, to come down and address that, that's your choice. It is not a forced choice. You don't have to interact with anyone you don't wish to interact with. Understand this. Okay. Yeah, but it's so it's like it's like um, keep your frequency high. Yeah, and stay above the fray, literally, figuratively. Floating every... above, you want to float above the conscious level. You know, it's almost like you're air walking over it, and uh, and we've heard that many times. Yeah, be in the world, not of the world. Yeah, it's, and that is that's what one thing. Whenever you Google ascended master, mm. what's the common thing? They always it's say the same thing. One foot in this world and one, one foot, foot in another other. world. Yes. So you're not so you're here observing everything. You're not completely engaged. Right. You don't want to be emotionally compromised where something's actually drawing energy That's a good positive word for or negative yes. from you. You want to be completely uh, comfortable in your own skin and understand with that discernment, which is one of the mastery levels here that everyone's learning here on earth, of what you what to let in and what to say pause. Yes. Okay? That pause is huge. That pause is wisdom. Right? So you have to make the experience Right? Mix that with some knowledge and then get some wisdom. Mm, yeah, exactly. Pause. 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so the, from there the day just goes into whatever it's like. It um, goes right into emails for me. Uh, you know what's what's the word? Okay, dealing with dealing with the world, and then also okay, let's get back to the subject of creating mm -hmm. because. Creating is what's up right now. I yes. think it's the new, the new sexiness, hotness is mm. creating. Yes. Period. Creating. Yep. And because that's where you go into no time, that's where you have the most fun, that's where you get to play the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing I can, not many things I can do that right. feel better than creating. Well, the funny thing is too, like in the many perfectionists out there, many very gifted art artisans, here's the deal. You begin to create like, oh, this is a fun, this is a hobby. And then all of a sudden that turns into your occupation and all of a sudden, you know, you get like perfectionist about what you're creating and in that mode of like you just wanting to make it better and make it better and make it better, it makes it better for everybody because your creation is now growing in its not only importance but potence. Your creation is flowering, it's blooming and as you become more interactive with when you're creating, you'd be really surprised how one little thing you start can turn into something amazing a year or two later. You never know where your skill set will take you. Just understand this, it always starts slow. You know, it's always a slow rise, but once you get going and you get that momentum, all of a sudden it just, you don't know how you got where you are, and you're just, you know, creating 24 hours a day. You know? And you know, another thing I want to make a point is about creating in the old paradigm versus the new paradigm. Mm. Old paradigm, um, in fact, I, I've been guilty of this, I'm going to admit it. Mm. Like, you know, I think it'd be really popular if I did a blog talk about this, or if I wrote a book about 10 ways to do this, yeah. some methodology or something. I'm not, I'm not putting down methodologies, but sometimes I'll think, what would be really popular? And right. creating from there, okay, that's what I'm getting away from. Right. Because we don't want to be creating for what we think people want. We want to be creating, I, was, I had, was lucky enough to have a conversation with Sandra Walter, Love Sandra. Sandra, She's hi so Sandra. Awesome. Hi Sandra, I miss you. And, and she said the greatest thing, she said create as if you're an artist. And yes. I went, oh, I, I mean, how basic is that? But so we simple. get so caught up in like, what is, what am I good at? What would sell? What would this? No, mm -hmm. you're an artist in your studio and you're going to create from that space. From that space. Mm -hmm. And I love that. That changes everything. Isn't it, that a game changer? It, it makes it, because it, it makes it fun again. It makes it fun again. And the thing is, they keep, yes, keep yes. you got to keep tweaking things and try new things and bring new things in. And uh, that's what, you know, the funny thing is when we, when we create, sometimes that creation, if you actually zoomed out, right, is just a component to that consciousness engine, which is Earth. So I like to think about it as like, I'm making a transmission, you may be making the engine, you might be making the uh, you know, windshield wipers, but this vehicle of awesomeness known as human uh, yes. John, oh you know so it, it's how we all work together as components to make this world a better place absolutely and also it's like can there be too many people talking about what is high vibe and what is high frequency I don't think so everyone's gonna say it in their own flavor yeah I'll everyone work. could be doing a show like this having their own things to say mm -hmm. because it's if we inspire each other. I'm like the closet YouTuber. Like I'll sit there like, you guys think I'm like not watching your videos. I'll be there like midnight. Just like, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Like how are you, ooh, you're developing well. Like, I mean, I do the same thing, you know, and I watch all my friends' videos. Uh, I like And I, we get a little bit of everything. Okay, so we're talking about our day and mm -hmm. staying high frequency, getting there and maintaining a high frequency. Yes. Um, I like to call it the vibrational diet. You know, we've got all these, all of our six senses, everything we're eating, feeling, thinking. Mm -hmm. All that coming in, what is our vibrational diet? Because sometimes when I feel like my frequency drops, I'm like, mm. oh yeah, I'm not really eating the best food. I'm not really hanging out with the best, you know, I, I just kind of start reviewing everything and kind of like go back to the beginning and make sure you're doing everything at the highest level. Yes, and it, it's a, a work of consistency. Once you get your vibration up, say you go on a family vacation or a trip and you're out in nature and you spend about a week there or five days there and you kind of redo a manual reset. The issue is that when you get back home, you know, to your city or, you know, your uh, village, your town, <laughs> depending on where you are in the world, right? um, understand that it's the subtle things that add up. It's the small things that add up. It's not, you know, one big change. It's a bunch of little changes that you maintain. Consistency is key. And maintaining your resonance is key. Um, I notice all the time uh, when my vibration drops, um, you know, all of a sudden it's very hard to manifest. All of a sudden it's very yes. hard to create. 
it, all of a sudden I just feel like I get locked up. You know, that's what I feel like. I feel energetically I get locked up. And the only thing I can truly say on those days, because we all have them, right? The only thing that helps me is when I can't create or I get stuck or I'm stuck on the couch and I'm like, you got to get up and do something. And I just kind of like, whatever, bro. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> what? I don't care. Maybe all the galactic flavors of the universe. <laughs> oh my God, I don't want to do anything. If at least you go to the gym and work out for a couple hours or whatever. Move the energy. You have to move the energy. Because if you don't, that poo-poo, you know, attitude could last two or three days. Or you could, you don't, the main thing is you don't wake up the next morning and feel yeah. like, Oh God, I'm still in the same place. You don't want to do that. So whatever you do, I always recommend is pound a, you know, drink a smoothie, make a real nice smoothie, go to the gym, and then come home then to go to sleep and do whatever you want to do. But have some sort of physical activity because what's happening is you're having to move that energy consciously or unconsciously. Exactly. There's energy, there's stagnance, there's blockages being cleared. And we feel those and that's fantastic. The issue is that you don't have to sit there and just take it. Go to the yeah. gym, work out, it helps move the energy. Yeah. And if you can't really figure out what's up, um, I'm going to read this little questionnaire. This is a, one of the books I've written called The Modern Muse. Okay. And it's like, how to find your vibrational harmony. And these are just questions. What am I eating? Who am I spending time with? What music am I listening to? What podcasts? Mm -hmm. What am I drawing into my, my sphere? Am I watching too much TV? Am I even watching TV? Am I watching depressing news? Oh my yes. God. Oh my God. You know, I laugh at it like it's a comic book at this point, but yeah, it's just the news. Is yeah, it's a comic book. And what is, how organized am I? Do I have, is my desk full of bills I need to pay? And you know, mm -hmm. just, um, where am I spending my time? Am I in nature? What am I obsessing about? And what am I just constantly thinking about? Mm -hmm. um, how am I self talking to myself? Am I telling myself that I'm, you know, all those bad things we, sometimes say to ourselves yes what's the self-talk um what am i reading studying what kind of clothes am i wearing true high vibrational jewelry have crystals you taken a have you taken a shower today <laughs> that's a good one have you shaved and <laughs> trimmed your fingernails today okay and also what am i contributing to the flow and what is the flow contributing to me so just mm. basic little rundown questions like you just mentally go through all your senses when your vibration gets low because that's where we want to keep it. Yes. And we, we have a word for it lately, and it's kind of a subtitle for this podcast, yeah. and it's called winning. Winning. And we were talking about it. It's like, whatever's going on, it's like, okay. Yeah. Golden Age lifestyle, winning. Winning. You know every the feeling day. when you're winning? Yeah. Like, even like, if you're competing with something, it's like, yeah, hey, I'm winning. I am. No. I'm, I'm, I'm whooping it, you know? You just want to feel like you're winning. Yeah, always. And I think that's what really living in 5D is. You're every single moment, you're just in bliss. You're blissed out. You're just winning every day. You're stoked to go to the grocery store. You're stoked to go to the, you know, go to the gym. You're happy to go create something. Um, you know, for me, it's just a constant high frequency because at that high frequency, it's so easy to create. I can't express it. It's like when you're relaxed, it's much easier to stretch and do yoga. But if you're all tense, you know, it's really difficult to do that. When you relax your body, relax your mind, you let the universe and the energy of the universe flow through you. Yeah. Instead of go right through you. Instead of you're like this, you know, dam blocking all the frequency. No, I know what's in my best interest. I got this all figured out. I'm like, yo, dude, I don't know how old you are on this planet. I don't care if you're 85. You don't have it figured out. One, two. Yeah. I mean, millions of years of evolution. Millions of years of evolution. Much greater than that. Understand your oversoul, which views you like this. Ah, oh there's my little 3D incarnate on Earth. Understand the perspective of actually what you're playing in. And I think that's the whole guise of the veil, ladies and gents, across Earth, is when you go from this little dude to start feeling like this little dude, right? depending on your flavor, you begin to understand the importance of the unity consciousness. You begin to the importance of understanding where you're coming from. Most importantly, how to operate and actually bring those manifestations and creative, you know, flows of energy to you. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. Always. So, you know, that's the really a key thing to understand. You're in a high vibe. I'm creating five or six, seven things. You might not see those five or six, seven things you created when you were in a great mood. Those are all sold next week. Or you made that deal next week. You set the precedent for the things to come. But if you are in a low frequency, oh, yeah. woe is me, I can't yeah. get anything going every day. The issue is that that's a stage. The only difference between someone who's successful and someone who is kind of stuck 
right? It feels like they can't get out. Is that the person that's successful has gone through that stage, 100% of the Debbie Downer every day sucks, but has worked in their daily routine some sort of way where they learned how to balance and keep mm-hmm. walking on that tightrope. They're like, even if I have a bad day, I'm just gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other. And you know what, the, the worst comes to the worst, I'm still gonna you know, take care of my body, take care of my vessel, and get my meditation on, get my steam room on, get some eucalyptus on, get some, yeah. get, get, get some hey, you know, just work on it. Energy attracts like energy. Exactly. Basic law of the universe. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the law of attraction, that's yeah. how it all works, that's, that's what's happening in our multi-dimensional merge. Mm. But I wanted to address one thing, so maybe you're sitting there watching and go, hey, well, that's cool, you guys are in Sedona today, and y'all can just sit around and create. Mm. I have to go to this stupid job. Yeah. And be around these free, low frequency people with ultraviolet lights on and really bad tap water and just like, you know, yes, yes, layer yes. upon layer of lower vibration stuff. And, you know, how do I get out? How, how, how do you address out? that? Yes. And, and, and that's, that's where you kind of establish your own territory. You start with your own vibration in the morning, you set your day up, you take good food, you take good water, mm-hmm. you do the best thing you can do. And then you go clear and you go into nature after it. You mm-hmm. work around that, knowing that that's happened. Do you have anything to add to that? Because that's a real question. Well, I, I help a lot of people when we do sessions. And the main thing that when they, you know, my, my brothers and sisters ask me, you know, how do I speak to my inner self or my higher self? And how do I get that organization inside of my mind, body, and spirit to actually get that going? Good well, one. the main thing is that you have to be willing to work at it, one. You know, when you get up in the morning, say your normal get up in the morning is, you know, 9 a.m. you get to be at work. So you get up at, you know, 7.30 is normal. Well, here's the deal. If you train your body to get up at 6, 6.30 and you do four laps around the block and then pound a smoothie and stare at the sun for half an hour, you do that every single day for a week, you will instantly be, it's like, it's like you're removing all the static off of you. And yes. what you did is you shifted a timeline. See, when you're viewing a, co- a population, a city, you can actually see all the little worker bees or however that is. I used to be, I'm right there with you. You know, waking up and here we go and here starts the consciousness engine of what this is. The issue is that you want to be the lady or the gent that's this guy. You know, these guys are beginning to wake up. These guys are beginning to wake up. You've already been up for an hour by yourself, sitting in meditation, watching the, watching the waves, you know, walking in a park, take the dog for a park. You're already breathing and fully differently. Present. You're present on a not different timeline. You're not trying to jump into the boat with everyone else. Yeah. You're in your own timeline. And same thing late at night. Uh, some people are a morning person, like Giselle. I'm a night person. I like it late at night when everyone's sleeping and all the consciousness and all the static kind of drops. You know, I like to move energy usually around 2 a.m. I like to go out in the backyard. That's when my shift is on. While everyone starts yeah, to yeah. sleep, I'm like, da 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 da. That's true. Da 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 da. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, the, you know, I'll, I'll get you while you're sleeping. You're like, oh, you think you're gonna mess with my family when they're sleeping? Let me help you out here. That's Earth, me. Earth guardian. Earth guardian. Earth guardian. Oh yeah, you think you're gonna later. put some weirdness? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just slamming on fools all day long, but in a nice way, but kind of. But yeah, I don't like people that push. Uh, I don't like. My flavor for my brothers and sisters is. And a lot of the stuff that I'm privy to you, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm in your corner. You know, I am here as an incarnate, just like you. And some of the controls on this planet, um, and what I've experienced here, and some of the things that um, I just really want to share from my heart is that for you guys who are waking up right now, and for you guys that are kind of stepping into your power and um, beginning to see but you know through the veil just understand that you're doing this for our brothers and sisters that aren't awake yet and that responsibility falls on your shoulders as it falls on mine so i just want you to understand like in this whole sim city game whatever you want to call this uh human experience those who step up understand the responsibility of stepping up and understand how much this world and your brothers and sisters truly need you and that's what i can say from my heart so I am in the corner of my friends and family across planet Earth. Uh, I'm not into mental slavery. I'm not into being someone's puppet. And I'm definitely not into following orders from beings that shouldn't have been in charge in the first place for the past 10,000 years. Let's go and put it, keep it right there. Go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I also want to mention, okay, so we talk about this window between now and September 28th. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about all the assistance we're getting, okay? This is a great subject. Mm-hmm. From the angelic realm. Right. from the cosmic rays. We were getting flooded 
with all kinds of photonic belt energy, mm -hmm. things helping us, shifting things for us. We have the help of the elementals. Mm -hmm. We have the help of the ascended masters. Mm -hmm. We have entire teams that are just beyond right helping us what we know and understand that you're over so you guys the reason why i feel feel like this and i can say a word like ten thousand years ago right because <laughs> issues that you're over so obviously and you, your soul is ageless timeless right so understand that it might seem like a real long time ago in the physical in our linear spectrum of time but understand that aid comes from all over this universe to help this planet out the universe, not just our solar system, you know, or our galaxy, okay? The whole universe is watching this game. So Absolutely. Yeah, so it's really important to understand the type All of All eyes are on us. Yeah, and, and it's really real. exciting times. You know, Gaia's raising her frequency. She's about to expand. Awesome. And we get to ride that frequency up. And I think it's really cool. And a lot of people wanted to be here doing this. Oh, uh, yeah. We're, this we're is like the hottest this. place to be right now. Yeah, this, yeah, we're like in the Super Bowl of Ascension. This is the Super Bowl right now. We're on... We're That's why it's so difficult. It's like, God, oh, wow, is everything so difficult? But the parade is going to be amazing. At amazing. The end. We will have that ambrosia. Oh my God. And the golden Frank chalices. And myrrh. Franks and myrrh. Frank and myrrh. I, I love that. I'm like, home, little man. I love that. I'm like, okay, so. Anyways. We keep talking about the soul. Yes. So I, I, I need the period right now is, I, I've been calling it soul sovereignty, where the yeah. actually soul is actually coming in and anchoring itself mm -hmm. and making itself sovereign. That's kind of what this ascension process feels like to me, and that we're creating from the soul. And the soul is what is dropping in. It's like, it feels different because we're moving out of like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? The, our, our, we're clearing up our minds and we're not having all that mental chatter about mm -hmm. where we are, are we doing enough, are we doing right. whatever. We're more into like, we're sitting back and like into the back of our beings and right. living from this heart space of knowingness, part of our remembrance, mm -hmm. soul comes in, anchors in. And so a lot of this, the process is just doing itself. Okay, here, and there's also something because I am uh, very much a part of the balance. I have to say something of that last comment I made about the controls of less than a thousand years. <laughs> I can't just let that be. Um, yeah. Here's the deal. On this planet, after Lemuria and Mu, and after Atlantis, we as a collective did some naughty things. Okay, so there were some controls placed upon this place in our consciousness I had to say that because, you know, you can't always point your finger at the principal and go, why do you make me go to school? And they're like, yo, homie, you chose to come to school. I just run this. So understand that um, everyone has their role they play, okay? My deal is that treat every single being with integrity, love, and compassion and help them grow. That is a, cre a true creator being in my uh, eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. I had to say that, though. You got to be balanced now. You can't just... Yeah. See, the issue is that when you point fingers, what do you do? Create separation. Okay, so that's our, that's you, don't, you don't want to do that. You got you got to integrate, integrate, understand both sides of the story, right? Of whatever that may be for you, okay? And um, understand that the reflection you seek is the one you're, that's staring right back at you. So sometimes in our lives, that reflection that keeps coming in is the one that we need to see and resonate that with ourselves, so that we can fully, more deeply understand ourselves. Very nice. Thank you. I felt like a silk pajamas right there. <laughs> that was it. That was you. Well, that's, that's like a snuggie. That was a party. I, feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm in some sort of <laughs> snuggie right now. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you are. All right, there we go. So um, that kind of is a perfect segue mm -hmm. into what I want to bring up next, and that is if creativity is the new sexiness, mm -hmm. what is the new hotness and, and the new badassness? Yes. Virtues. Yes. I mean, did we ever think we'd be doing a show on the virtues? No. And the qualities of, I mean, these are the qualities of the Ascended Masters, and it's kind of, they're coming back in style. Meaning, the better the virtues, the more integrity you have, the more hotness, badassness you are. When your word actually means something. Qualities so of you, knighthood. We're yes. returning back to the integrity. <clears throat> um, there's so many levels that this hits home on. Um, do we even know what the virtues are? Let's, let's, let's get a breakdown. Let's get a breakdown. Get a there's breakdown actually, the there's... There, not everyone agrees on them, but there's there's actually an organization called Characters First, mm -hmm. and it lists, I think, 50 virtues, and they're also in this book, listed in the Modern Muse. Mm -hmm. And the first one is alertness, attentiveness, availability, benevolence, and it says like benevolence versus selfishness. So mm -hmm. it has the good quality versus the bad quality, but I'm just going to read the good ones. Okay. Boldness. Yes. Cautionness, compassion, contentment. Mm -hmm. That's a great quality. Yes. And a virtue. Creativity, hello. 
um, decisiveness, deference, dependability. Um, what do you get out of deference? Um, that's like kind of deferring to people. I guess that's like humility, deferring to someone. Mm. Determination, diligence, dependability, being dependable, your word being. Mean. Yes, dependable, and then is humble in there? I think we're going to get to the H's in there. Oh my God, are those, you, well, she just well, crushed it in that thing. Wow. We're just going to like, we have discretion. Those are like definitions. Endurance, enthusiasm. Okay. Let's get to, Stamina. hey, gentleness. Gentleness, yes. Gentleness, Gentle generosity. Giants. My favorite saying is the stronger you become, the, the stronger you become, the softer you are. Wait, like that. the stronger you, no, the stronger you become, the more gentle you can the be. The more gentle you, yeah, yes. you can be, yeah. I love that, especially love for that. a big dude like you. I'm a little guy. <laughs> no, you're not, okay. I'm a big guy in a little seat. Gratefulness, honor, uh -huh. hospitality. I could be better with that, couldn't I? Yes. Yeah, see? Being a great host. Being a, being you know, a good host. Uh, you know, being a good host and someone comes over, you know, open your house to them, you know, and you're very nice and you're loving. Give them something to eat. Give them something to eat. Like the best thing, you like, need something, you know. Like the best food that you have in your house, that's what you would offer. Family, were, yeah, yeah. Kid, that's, it, in that manner, uh, your appreciation resonates through all of who they are, which is nice. Just a few more here. Here's humility, mm -hmm. joyfulness, um, initiative. Hey, begin your creation, initiate. Yes. Justice, loyalty. Um, I'm going to skip obedience. I don't know about that one. Um, persuasiveness, punctuality, being mm. resourceful, responsible, having self control, mm. sensitivity, sincerity. That's a good one. Sincerity. Sincerity. Pretty much so. Yeah, like I heard the other day that flattery was a really sophisticated form of insincerity and a lie. And I had to think about that because I think all of us, if I'm going to really get down to my virtues, mm. um, it can be a manipulation <clears throat> tool when you flatter someone. Have you noticed yes. that? Well, yeah. I'm kind of breaking that down right now. Oh, you break, you're doing it? Yeah, you're, you're breaking it, it down. Break it down. You know, whenever I flatter you, you know it's like... Oh, this is all fluff. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see through it. I'm, I'm like, oh, really? Is that how you <laughs> yeah. feel? Have a blessed day, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thriftiness. Hmm. hmm. Tolerance, truthfulness, virtue versus impurity, mm -hmm. wisdom, etc. Having patience. Patience is a virtue. Oh my god. Patience I didn't like, even say that one because I'm, that's my worst one. Patience is the ultimate virtue. Patience, compassion. Yes. Compassion. Anyway, hey, things to think about. Mm -hmm. Read the list. Get to know the words. Even knowing the words is great. Yes. And then, you know, and then actually... Just actually well, where, living where, where, that way. Where, where can they find the list? They, well, yeah. I have it published in the Modern Muse. I have a okay, list in okay. here. Well, they, well, yeah. It's a book on Amazon cool. by Giselle Coy. Cool. Um, and it's good to refer to them because they were actually, I did not know the meaning of benevolence is actually to do something without getting any credit for it. Unconditional love. Well, hey, how about you do something and you don't get credit? Like yeah. you make an anonymous donation and you go clean up something, you know. Yeah. Well, that th quality. Those are the things that are recorded in the Akashic. Another situation mm -hmm. is like things are going to happen, you know, with your yes. family, with your roommates, whatever, and you know, have the integrity, have the virtues to to want to clear it. And work I mean, it. you're responsible for your own universe. Here's what here. I can say about that. Okay, when you choose a very specific timeline for your own individual activation, friends are fantastic. We love our friends. Uh, when you're dealing with your bloodline and your family. Here's the dynamic for my generation and the kids that will be watching us in the future. Um, a lot of the mending and healing that needs to take place, maybe between your grandma, your grandpa, your uncles, your mom, your dads, look, there's a lot of stuff that um, needs to be healed in your bloodline, in your family. Take that time and precedent to actually understand this and not to get sucked into the emotional response of this or that, but rather... Um, Come from a loving place, come from a neutral place, and understand that regardless, that's still your mom, regardless, that's still your dad, regardless, that's still your brother or your sister. So understand that. And sometimes some of the, the harshest reflections we can get, or the strongest I, should, strongest, I should say, reflections we should get from past lives is in this life, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. When there's karma Definitely. that needs to be worked out in your stream for you to ascend and for you to understand this stuff, if they really want you to learn really quickly, what they'll do is, they'll, okay, that's your brother now, work it out. 
You know, so understand that through the different incarnations, a lot of this karmic stuff is worked out. Understand that, that your brother, your sister, your mother, your father in different lives could have played different characters and what they meant to you. Understand this. And in, with your bloodline, they're much closer than you might think. And also, it's, I like to look at the people that I get in situations with or whatever I'm clearing with or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an honor. It's like, you're so close to me, I'm going to choose to work this stuff out with you. Yeah, soul family. It's soul family. It's like, that's where, you know, that's where you get to be vulnerable. Um, you're going to exhibit your... <laughs> I was going to make jokes, but I almost stop. Yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? I don't know. I was going to say something inappropriate. But what I'm really trying to get to yeah. is the love. Yes. Yes. So, next subject. I, I think I just wanted to kind of share what we do, and then, I'm, you know, we'll wrap that up for the next episode. Really? I got one more. Go, go right ahead. I think it's important. Okay. So we're talking about the soul and the soul sovereignty. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying this and I really am meaning it. It was, has been, and always will be about mm. the self, capital S. Mm. And so we are the only person in our universe. And this whole thing, this whole process right now, mm. I just want to say it's about radical self-love. Mm. I think that that is the journey that How we're on. How can you love someone else truly if you don't first love yourself? Radical self-love. That, that defines mm. your entire experience here on this planet. That is not operation to self mind you, that is love for yourself in this experience that you're having, different. Absolutely. Yes. So, from my self-love to your self-love, to yes. you, your self-love, from me to you to you to the to universe. love and everything. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Stay yes. tuned for episode two. Yes. And thank you very much, and uh, many blessings to everyone out there. Many blessings. And if you guys would like to check out some uh, different websites or things that we do, this is Giselle Coy. You can check out GiselleCoy.com. If you'd like to have some energy tools or some sessions, you can check out ascensionleague.com or galacticwands.com. We have all your energetic needs covered there. Absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Look forward to seeing you soon. Blessings. Thank you.